Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dennis Zylster and this is Getting in the Game. Today, if you want to know how to modify a rivet gun all the way down to where it'll get into some of these smaller spots without using that little wedge, then today's video is for you. Stick around. In the, in the past, when we're working on these, you, you have to use that little wedge because of the angle of the head. And some of them are so, so steep, I don't, I don't like that. So uh, I finally took apart a rivet gun and tried to do a modification. Because this only costs $27 on Amazon. I'll, uh, I won't leave a link to it, but I'll, I'll put a picture right here. And you can freeze it and look at it if you want to get it. But this is a cast aluminum but it was already my shortest one. So I was decided to sacrifice it because $27 and I could be back in the game if I had to buy another one. Um, so the modification went really well. So here's exactly what I did. Well, I didn't film this when I was doing it because I didn't even know if it would be valuable or if it would work. So I'm going to show you how I did it on the one that I actually did it to. So I wish I would have filmed it, but First of all, the, they have a little C-clip out here on the side. Just remove that. And have them fly all over the shop. I'm going to put a little rag here so it looks better for you guys. The nice part about this modification is we're not giving up any strength. I've uh, done a lot of grinding on them and actually had them collapse. Like if you take too much of this aluminum off here um, to get it into tighter spots. Um, if you are going to do that, a quick tip, don't ever grind it right on the side. Tip, tip it out slightly where you're going to grind it because that's where the handle is going to be anyway. Okay, we got the, uh, the, the clip off. That right here. There's a pin that just slides out and a little bushing here. Before I cut this top off, as you can see here, there was a little pin, a press pin through here that just stopped the handle from going up. Well, let's get that out of the way a minute. And let's remove that. That's all there is to a, a rivet gun, um, if you've never had one apart, except for the tip. One of the great modifications to this one was taking a tip that's this deep, as you can see the difference. So the first thing I did was grind this tip off and get it just as thin as I could and still be able to get a wrench on it. And then I'll show you how I carved the, the dome back in. But go ahead and uh, just to get this spring out of your way, unless you want to hold it down, I would push this pin out. Really simple. Just take, just take uh, a punch and tap that out lightly. You could uh, center it over a piece of wood with a hole, drill a good size hole so you can lay this flat so you don't hurt anything. And then go ahead and punch this out. Once that's removed, take it over to your bandsaw and I will give you the exact measurements. With the length there. Cut the head off. Get rid of the pin completely. And uh, Take this on your grinder over there on your buffing wheel and just smooth it all up. You're going to get a lot of stuff down inside, and we'll clean that all up later um, so that it'll work smoothly. Once that's done, set that aside. Now, let's take this apart so you'll see what we're doing. The only thing this is for is retaining a spring that helps work these jaws. The jaws are what grab that uh, rivet shank. We're not going to change how that, how that spring works. We're just going to change the retainer. But this is how it works. That pushes down. And the most important part is this little dome here that helps spread those back out. That's what lets it release. So don't modify anything on the back side. The first thing you're going to do is pull that screw out and take this over to your grinder. And just lightly hang on to it. 
So grind this down. All you need is one good thread all the way around. So get that down as far as you possibly can. Then screw it back into this. Okay, yours is going to look different than this. When you screw it up in, it's going to be down in past that. That's how much metal we can grind off. So take this back over to your grinder and sit there and spin it on your wheel until you're down to your uh, the bolt that you just ground off. But before you do that, grind a notch in the vise. Put this in, in your vise, in your vise grips, and grind a nice notch right across that so that you got something to grab back a hold of with your screwdriver. All right, back to it. Now you've you've put this uh, you've put this back in down as far as it can go, the spring retainer, and then you've ground this off until you you've hit that and uh, polish that back up. So now this throw is shorter, even though the workings inside are exactly the same. So let's put that back together real quick. Okay, make sure that you clean this out really good. Um, put some acetone down in there, something to, to uh, get all the shavings out, blow it out really good, because that will mess with how it works. First of all, clean really well. Okay, now, now that it's clean, all been dried and wiped off with your rag, uh, put your jaws back in there so they're sticking out the bottom like that again. Then this little wedge has to go right between them and that usually finds its center. Then the spring, you can kind of tell if it is. Yep, it is. You could put a little Loctite on that if you were worried about it backing out in the future. All right, those are ready to go again. And then what it does is it just pushes on that and opens them. See it open in the jaws? So now that that's done, and we've shortened the back of this, let's reassemble. This, this matters the way it goes. They've got two notches in each side that the handle is going to go into. So put the notches to the side. Put your spring back in. Note how that when you go to take that apart, of course, note how it goes. And then it's easy enough. Once you get that with the two notches on the sides, it's a little fussy. To put that in there like that, throw your pin back in. Now, when this comes up, it uh, doesn't have the pin anymore to hit any place to hit there, but, but it ain't going to pop out on you because the pin's retaining it. Slide that back into position and put your C clip, put your C clip back in. She's ready to go, but now we've got another thing to do. Take the one that you're going to use for your, let's say, uh, your A5s. If you're thinking it's going to change anything once it, it it lets the rivet go in further, the only thing that it's going to change once it's in there, is where it grabs it. It's just going to grab it down the shank just a little further. The only other thing you're going to do is you're going to get this, this head closer to your workpiece, which isn't going to hurt a thing in what we're doing. For clearance, a lot of uh, rivet guns build these quite tall, and that is not necessary for what we're going to do. As you can see, that's the finished product. So take it, take it and grind it down until she's perfectly flat. Smooth it all up. And now this is what I want you to do. Take a small drill and, and slightly drill it first. Um, you'll kind of get a feel. You have to get a feel for this. Uh, don't go too far. Go, uh, you can always go back and take more out. So go in there first and just get it started with a drill because the drill will, will cut this stuff really good. This is going to take some time. You're going to need to have uh, a quarter inch shank like this with die grinder. And 
you're going to set it in the vise like this and grind straight down just like this and wobble it around. I don't know if you can see that there. Go straight down just like that and just keep doing it until you get the rivet completely surrounded. And it just goes past the edge. If you go too far, you'll have to smooth, you'll have to grind this down just a little more because if you go too far and this sets in too far, this this outside edge will hit your aluminum and put a little smile on the edge of it. So test it before you're done to make sure that it's not doing that. And the other option you have was once you get these ground down flat is to put them in the mail, send them to uh, Zenith, and they'll put them in for you and then send them back to you and you'll be up and running. If you're worried about the radius or any change of anything, I'm not. These look exactly like the ones that they did for me. Here's an A5 that they did and uh, they're, they're exact. I've measured the depth and stuff and uh, from what I can tell, don't quote me, they're the exact, they're exactly round. That radius right there is round. It isn't flat or ovaled out. Now, if you don't have, if you don't have one of these, um, go ahead and grab one down to Lowe's or Home Depot or something. Don't get a round one. I mean, it'll do the job, but then you're limited to what you can use it for in the future. Um, this has the sides that are nice and flat, and guess what that's great for? If you don't have a die grinder with a quarter inch shank and a, uh, a bit like this, these are great for hogging out holes and smoothing and getting things enlarged to the point where you can fine tune them with sandpaper. Now that we got that in there, now I get to show you the fun part. This is a normal size rivet gun and as you can see, that does not fit in there. It doesn't even come close. This is so close to it that the angle is all so steep that I don't even think the wedge would give you a nice, a nice pull. One of the really nice parts about this that worked out was with the rivet in, and if you do cut that back as far as I did, when this is in, this is the greatest thing about it being short for just starting a rivet because it will, it will pass that and get and get you up to that hole. But let me get take this out. I don't want to pull that yet. Once you're in, even with a rivet in there, you have plenty of room with that inner workings coming out that it doesn't touch anything. You got to kind of watch that when you're doing it though. If you've made it this far, you must really care about modifying things. And I want to show you uh, and, and give you a little bit of a warning. On the casted ones in the past, I have ground the sides down quite drastically and they did their job right up until I used them on a, let's say a steel rivet or a, a stainless steel rivet. And the head was so thin of the, the external part was so thin that it collapsed. So it, you can over modify them. Now, as far as the steel ones go, all you're doing is you're making it very unsafe. Uh, right here is my, my big daddy and it needed to get in really tight on something. I had to sneak it in there and it was like really tight up to the side. And of course you can go, you can grind right into the, the uh, replaceable head here, the replaceable bit uh, for the rivet sizes, as long as you don't grind in so far that you're to where it's supporting the rivet. But go ahead and grind that right out as you can see that the, the workings in there, the only thing those do is holds that spring in there and holds the jaws in. So if you don't cut through that, uh, you can grind the tar out of this. Look at how much I've taken off this. You can imagine if you're up here holding this, those edges are quite sharp. I haven't denibbed them quite enough yet, but it doesn't matter. If you were to get your little bit of a finger in there somehow and you were opening this up and that did that, you would uh, you would take a chunk of your finger off. So put a piece of, I just put electric tape around these and then it stops anything from going in there, dust, anything, but you still got that and you don't have to, if the electric tape's on there, you don't nick things up either as much.
I really hope you go to Amazon and pick up one of these. I'm not sponsored by them or anything. Um, or I don't have a link so that I make a few cents. It's nothing like that. It's just that these kind are heavy, harder, to, harder to do. I, I really don't even see a good way of modifying this one from Ace Hardware. And it's easy to modify. I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to absolutely love that I did this. Um, I should be working on this, but when I think of something like this that I want to do and it works out, I got to share it with you guys. So if this helped you and it's something you're going to do, please like, and I hope you have subscribed. If I have any more like this in the future, hopefully uh, you'll be around to see them. Hey, thanks a lot for sticking around. We'll see you in the next one.